here and at home. I invite you to stand for our call to worship, followed by our opening hymn of praise, A Charge to Keep I Have. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. O oh God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Choice to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and a fated for the sky. To serve the present age, my calling to your mask, but a smile in your eyes. I invite you to, to wave or bow, uh, nod your head toward those in, in greeting to each other. At home, do what you can do at home to greet each other. everyone. You know, right now in church, we've been talking about real people, real purpose, and real God, life under the cross. And today, we're going to be talking about real purpose. You know, everything was created with a purpose. So, I thought that together,
together, we could look at a few different items and talk about what their purpose is. Like post-it notes, they were created for a purpose. So we could write down little notes. and stick it somewhere where hopefully we won't forget. Like this calendar. Its purpose is so that we can write down important dates and not forget them. Even a TV remote has a purpose for changing the channels or turning up and down the volume. Even this mask has a purpose. Probably seen a lot of these lately, huh? Their purpose is to protect us. The Bible has a purpose too. Do you know what it is? To teach us about God's amazing story. You know what else has a purpose? I'm looking at it right now. You and you and you and me. We all have a purpose. You know, each of the items that I showed you today were created with a certain purpose in mind. Just like God created each of us with a purpose. And we get to choose that if we can live according to that purpose. Never forget that you were created for a purpose. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, I just thank you for creating all these amazing things for a purpose. And Lord, I know that we were all created for a purpose. And I just hope that we can live up to that purpose. Lord, I ask these things in your name. Amen. Bye, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Good morning, everyone. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people and your father's household, to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we live in a changing world. We know that, right? Uh, that's, but that's not a new statement. We've always lived in a changing world. And many of us have experienced lots of changes in our lifetimes before we ever reached 2020. But the last six months have seen massive changes in the way we live, in the, in the way we eat, in the way we educate in the way we travel, in the way we worship. So much has changed and is changing that this summer we wanted to see if we could take a look at what hasn't changed in our lives before we reach the conclusion that everything is going to you know where in a handbasket. We need to st step back, take a breath, and take a closer look at things. We need to discern what is truly changing and what actually remains the same. We need to see what stands the test of time because this certainly is a time when we want to make sure our roots are firmly planted. We want to know what in this changing world is still real. So we went back to our congregation's vision statement, real people, real purpose, real God, life under the cross. 
And we went back to the beginning of the Bible, the very beginning of Scripture, to the book of Genesis. And we heard about God bringing order out of chaos and creating everything. And two weeks ago, we proclaimed that God is still real today. And then we went a little further in Scripture, but still in the first chapter of Genesis and heard about God creating us in God's own image. And then in chapter 2 of Genesis, how God breathed into us the breath of life. And we proclaim last week that we are still real people. Well, today we go a little bit further into Scripture, but not much, to the beginning of the 12th chapter of Genesis. Now, this is a crucial scriptural passage. Terence Fritham, an Old Testament professor at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, writes this about the first three verses of chapter 12 in Genesis. Fritham writes, Interpreters universally consider verses 1 to 3 to provide the key for the rest of Genesis. Indeed, the Pentateuch. That means the first five chapters of the Bible. They, verses 1 through 3, constitute a fulcrum text, thoroughly theological and focused, especially written to link chapters 1 through 11, which looks at all of the families of the earth with the ancestral narratives of the Hebrews and to project forward to the later history of Israel as a great nation. Although Abram will never see this future, his response will shape it. Now I imagine if you had known that the first three verses of the 12th chapter of Genesis provided the key to the rest of Genesis, including Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy 2, if you had known that verses 1, 2, and 3 constitute a fulcrum text, especially written to link chapters 1 through 11 with the next 176 chapters you might have listened a little more closely this morning well listen up because here it comes again the Lord said to Abram go from your country your people and your father's household to the land I will show you I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Well, God's first word to Abram is go. Actually, God's first two words to Abram are go. We just don't translate the second one literally. Lech lecha. The ancient Hebrew language didn't have underlining or bold text or quotation marks to add emphasis. So words are repeated to add emphasis. Lech lecha meant really go. Now, we're not talking about just going around in circles. We're not talking about going just to be going. That's what we did in high school. On Friday night, some of my friends and I would get together, and at some point, somebody would say, come on, let's go. And everybody else would say, go where? And the reply was, let's go to town. Well, everybody knew what he meant. We'd all hop in one car and head for downtown. We would get to the downtown square with the county courthouse in the middle of it. 
and we would start driving north on Jefferson Avenue, past Duke and Ayers, Five and Dime on the right, past First National Bank, past Chambers Drugstore, Jefferson Avenue Church of Christ, Piggly Wiggly Grocery Store, Mount Pleasant Savings and Loan, the Curry Clinic, where my brothers and sister and I were born, past everybody's furniture store, past Bates, Cooper, and Weems Funeral Home, past Safeway Grocery Store, Breckner Animal Hospital, and Sandlin Motors. We'd turn into the Dairy Queen parking lot. We wouldn't even stop. We'd go around the Dairy Queen and then head south on Jefferson Avenue. It was the same thing going south, just in reverse order, until we reached the county courthouse. We'd drive around it and head north again, and again, and again. And I'm figuring some of you right now are saying, what a waste of money in gasoline. But when I got my driver's license, Gas was 19 cents a gallon. And again, and again. It was a loop, a circle. And even though it all started with, let's go, we didn't end up going anywhere at all. Well, it's different with Abram. Go from your country from your people, from your father's household to a land I will show you. Well, this is a decisive command from God to leave the past behind and go to an unnamed land. This is the classic mythological motif of the journey of life. Remember, in religious studies, myth carries truth. So this is the classic true call to live a life, not going around in circles, but to live a life of real purpose. Well, what purpose? I will bless you so that you will be a blessing. In biblical Hebrew, blessing is barach, a significant part of the meaning of Barach is the transfer of divine power. And here at the beginning of Jesus, or Genesis, uh, Genesis 12, is when the transfer of divine power is first mentioned in Scripture. I will bless you so that you will be a blessing. I will transfer divine power to you so that through you, others may receive divine power. Now we heard this notion in our call to worship from Psalm 67 this morning. God, our God, has blessed us. Oh God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. And Paul in 1 Corinthians 12 tells us, he says, now, now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. Paul went on to write in multiple letters that the Holy Spirit allocates the spiritual gifts of Christ himself, the spiritual powers of Christ among believers, the power to teach, the power to help, the power to witness, the power to heal, the power to forgive. You've heard me say many times, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. We use that so often, we may miss the meaning, actually the power of that statement. Scripturally, names uh, describe who a person is. Um, Jesus, Yeshua, 
in Hebrew means Savior, and Christ, Christos, in Greek means anointed. Uh, but scripturally, names also carry power. Back in high school again, if I was upstairs where my two brothers and I lived, doing something and my sister called up the stairwell, Jack, it's time to eat. Well, I might stop what I was doing and go downstairs to eat, or I, I might not. But if my sister called up the stairwell, Jack, Mama says it's time to eat, I definitely would stop what I was doing. What's the difference? The second one was spoken in the power of my mother's name. And I knew the difference. So listen again. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the anointed Savior, you are forgiven. Well, we hear other calls throughout Scripture to live a life of real purpose. In the third chapter of Exodus, Moses encounters God in a, a burning bush that is not consumed. And God tells Moses that he has heard the cries of his children in Egypt. And he says, so now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. In Isaiah 6, the prophet hears the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And the prophet said, Here am I, send me. Matthew 28, the resurrected Christ tells his disciples, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In John 20, the resurrected Christ says to his disciples, As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Over and over and over, over again in Scripture. God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit calls us to be partners with God in transferring divine power to a world in need of it. Well, this morning we included verse 4 too. So, Abram went. In other words, Abram responded. And today, now, Christ is calling us to go. Go in Christ's name. Go in the power of Christ's name. Go to live lives of still, real purpose. And go to live lives filled with the divine powers possessed by the very anointed Savior of all creation, Jesus Christ. Now, we've already sung about that this morning. With Charles Wesley's timeless words, a charge to keep I have. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. And so now we go. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks that you didn't just create such a beautiful creation that you didn't just design us in your own image, 
that you didn't just breathe into us the breath of life, but you also designed us in a way that you could transfer your divine power to us so that we could be partners with you in bringing that divine power into your creation and to your creatures, our fellow brothers and sisters. Lord, today we, we ask you to fill us to overflowing with the power of your Holy Spirit so that we may still serve a real purpose for you and for others. And we pray this, Lord, in your Son, Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
please be seated. Now let us join our hearts and our minds together as we go to God in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we give you great thanks for this day and for the many blessings of love and life that you shower upon us in it. We give you thanks for the, the blessings of family, of friends. We give you thanks for the, for the blessings of, of modern medicine, for all the miracles of healing that it has already worked. We give you thanks for first responders, hospital staffs, testing center attendants, medical researchers who are tirelessly serving all of humanity and each one of us through their efforts. Lord, we, we seek your continued presence with us continued enlightenment so that we may see more clearly our way forward as individuals, as a congregation, as a community, as a nation, and, and as a world. Help us, Lord, to keep in mind you created all of us in your image. Help us keep in mind, Lord, that you call us to bear one another's burdens. And by doing that, we fulfill the law of Christ, your Son and our Savior. Today, Lord, we, we ask your presence with those that are gathered here in praise and worship. We ask your presence with those unable to come, but still worshiping at home online. We ask, Lord, that you open the hearts of our eyes minds and hearts so that we may see new ways to still serve a real purpose in our daily lives for you and for others. We pray this, Lord, in your Son, Jesus Christ, holy and powerful name, our rock and our redeemer who taught us to say when we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I have a, a few announcements to keep us up to date with where we are in the world and in the, our congregation. Uh, if you are worshiping with us online and you live within 50 miles of where I'm standing right now, then you are in one of the hot spots of coronavirus in the world. It's important for us to continue doing what we've been doing. That is keeping our safe, physical, healthy distance from each other, wearing masks, and uh, being ready to respond to any other guidelines that are going to help us serve each other and ourselves. 
that could mean in coming days and weeks being in contact with contact or contact tracers who may be calling you or me, many of us, to say there's a possibility we might have been exposed to a positive case. And they are asking for information to help stop the spread of the virus. We who are one body, not individuals, are called to be responsible, to be open and honest with state and county officials about where we've been and if they ask who we've been with. Now, having said that, I want to remind you that there are scam artists out there that are going to use something that sounds official to get your social security number, to get a bank account number, to get a credit card number. And if anybody asks for any of that stuff, don't give it to them because they are not a contact tracker. Now the Texas Department of Health and Human Services has some very good information on this and I encourage you to, to, to go to that uh, uh, online source. We have some things happening here in the church. One is uh, uh, we will be working over the next two months with Servolution Mainland. It's a group of churches uh, in mainland Galveston County uh, that work together on local and global missions. And this summer, for the rest of the summer, uh, the mission project is Souls, like Shoe Soul, for Souls. S-O-U-L-S. We're collecting gently used, or if you prefer, new shoes uh, for people in need. And our hope as uh, in mainland Galveston County is to collect 10,000 pairs of shoes. You can drop them off uh, in our collection box on the east side of the uh, church building under the covered driveway for uh, the next two months. Each day, at the end of the day, we'll collect those shoes and, and bring them in and uh, hold on to them. In three Sundays, we're going to be having another blood drive uh, with uh, partnering with Gulf Coast Regional uh, Blood Center. Uh, the link to register is already online. It's in the email that you received yesterday. And last week, I know Vacation Bible School uh, went very well because yesterday Rhonda and I were out in our front yard doing some, some work and a family across the street was out for their walk but their church members with young children and they said we loved Vacation Bible School. Well, the, the, the sessions are still online uh, Ms. Taylor still has Vacation Bible School material kits available. If uh, you or someone you, you know wants to uh, experience a VBS focus, uh, once you do that and then complete the focus report form, you get a $5 Sonic gift card. Um, so that's, we're doing that for the rest of this week too. Right now, we're not passing uh, the offering plates uh, from hand to hand, from pew to pew. We do have offering plates uh, in the back of the sanctuary where you can place your tithe or offering uh, before you uh, leave the sanctuary. Um, still, we know as Christians that the act of giving itself is a divine act. We experience God's love for us through God's giving to us. And we know that others experience our love for them through our own self-giving. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks for all the good gifts you shower upon us. Lord, we ask that you receive these, our gifts, and use them for love and life. Amen.
That was fun. Wasn't that fun? I, I mentioned to them earlier in the week, I said, hey, I can help. And they said, there's no more room on the piano bench. <laughs> oh, well, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I invite you to stand as you're able for our hymn of Christian discipleship, is, which is oh, such a, a, a meaningful one, I think, for all of us today. I, I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus, which speaks to not only our response, our obedience of the call to go, but it also speaks to our desire to want to do it. Let's sing together. I want to walk as a child. We come to that part of the worship service that we call the sending forth. Now, our congregation didn't start that. I didn't start that. This congregation didn't start that. It's, it's not even something that was uh, begun during the New Testament times. It goes all the way back to that 12th chapter of Genesis. When God said, Lech lecha, go, really go. So it's as though at the end of each service we are sitting with Abram and Sarah back in the Middle East and God says to us, go forth from this place and live lives of still, real, purpose. And know that as you go, that the love of God the Father, the grace of God the Son, and the communion of God the Holy Spirit go with you, go through you, through you, and go through you. And let all the people say, Amen. Amen.